Let's get you an exclusive, insightful conversation here. And this is with the director, regional director of the World Health Organization, Dr. Poonam Singh. She's spoken to our correspondent, our colleague, Miranaus Ayushman, about how the scale and intensity of the virus is rising, that the challenges are huge. But she's also added here, India has been putting in a lot of efforts much early in the day and trying to contain the virus. Ma'am, global pandemic, uh, the declaration has come from WHO. How big this challenge is and when in past did we see something like this? The challenges are huge and that is why WHO has declared it as a pandemic. We find the scale and the intensity of the disease going up. As you see today, you find that there are 117 countries which are affected. You find that the number of deaths from the pandemic are more than 4,000. And you also find that those who are affected and who are ill and under treatment and observation, they also are about a lakh and 27,000. So it's a huge scale. And WHO has been monitoring this right from the beginning. We have been looking at it very closely and at different stages have declared what needed to be declared, like it was declared as a public health emergency of international concern on the 30th of January this year. Then after one month, on 28th of February, it was declared as a, in the global high risk assessment was done for it. So globally, it was confirmed that this is high risk. Now, looking at the spread of the disease and the number of countries affected, it has been declared as a pandemic. Ma'am, uh, if we talk about the government of India, because now India has over 70 cases and first death is also reported from here. How do you see this uh, effort that the government has taken and the measures which are there in place, uh, universal screening is taking place, the airports, but the community outbreak that the government has said that there is no community outbreak. Uh, what is the road ahead and do you think that effort from the government is enough or more needs to be done? Now, government uh, of India could see what is happening in some countries around the world where this started before India could even detect a case. And that was a signal to sit up and prepare. And we in the region had started preparedness in advance. We did a risk assessment of every country of our region to see what is the capacity they have and what is the gap that we need to fill up. So even before we started addressing this, we had a very clear picture of what India's capacity is, what different countries' capacity is, and what needs to be done further. Now, India, right from the beginning, therefore, prepared itself. And they were quite transparent about sharing information. And uh, I think they did put in a lot of effort in trying to train people just last Friday, they trained about 1,400 people. 400 were present in the room, and 1,000 were connected with the video through the IT with different countries, uh, different states in the country. So to train 1,400 people at one go was a huge effort that India made. Apart from that, there is other training also going on. Then India has stopped. It's PPEs. They have enough today to be able to handle the crisis. They have it at state level. They have it at central level. They also have increased their lab capacity. They today have 52 labs which can test cases. In fact, they are testing cases from other countries also. And they have about 57 labs where uh, they are trying to detect cases and get samples which are then later tested. So uh, India, therefore, you know, has a good plan. They have a containment plan with them. And the most important thing is that they are trying to operationalize that plan. Then we've noticed that they are very transparent about what's happening. If there is an affected case, they share it. They are supposed to share it, but they are sharing it. And then if there is a death, they, are, they share it with us. So. As far as WHO is concerned, we find that this is a country which is working hard to protect its citizens from this epidemic. Uh, universally, we have seen this. Uh, often, the uh, while the universal screening is taking place, the fever is not getting detected. And after a few days, the symptoms actually come up. How big is this challenge? You see, some cases which don't have fever 
and are asymptomatic. They don't have any symptom. They will not have fever, they will not cough, but they are carriers. They are still carrying the virus. Now, in such, these are the cases which probably need to be given more attention. And if a person is sick, he knows he's sick. You know, fever may not be detected, but he may be having a cough, he may be having a cold, he may be feeling fatigued, he may be feeling that he's not well, there's something wrong with him. So then the onus falls on that individual too, to go to a clinic and get himself tested. It's, it's just a small test that tested to see whether he has coronavirus or not, because if he doesn't do that, he's going to infect a whole lot of other people. He will infect his family, he will infect people at the workplace, he will infect people who he meets socially. So it's a huge danger. That is why fee besides fever, there are other indicators also, which need to be taken seriously. India has got a huge population. If you talk about the community uh, uh, transmission, that ministry has clearly said that hasn't happened here. How big is the challenge for India to, uh, now we are seeing, we, we have seen over 74 cases now, how big is the challenge of community transmission? You see, there are four stages that WHO talks about when we talk about this disease and we talk about on how to deal with it. The first is countries which have no case. So there you do your normal preparedness, that in case there is a case, what will you do? Then come countries which have isolated cases, like India had before. Easier to treat. If you have an isolated case, very easy to treat that. Of course, the rider there is that people above the age of 60 are more vulnerable and they should have no comorbidities, which means they should not have other diseases like high blood pressure or diabetes or anything of that sort. The third stage that WHO talks about is cluster transmission. You know, there are clusters of people who are getting affected, not just one person. There could be a whole family getting affected. There could be a group of people who are traveling together, they get affected. There could be a group of people, say, attending some mass gathering, some ceremony, some religious function who get affected. Then there are more people who are affected. Last is community transmission. That is, it just spreads in the community where you may not find an imported case and yet people are falling ill. So that stage has not been reached by any country of my region yet. So we are in any case preparing countries for it because anything can happen. So therefore we need to be well prepared. As they say, prepare well and hope for the, prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Ma'am, one last question. We have seen reports of HIV drugs being uh, used in a way, at some point of time, people have been uh, using it. And also uh, the temperature coefficient, if you talk about how true are these uh, both assumptions in uh, related to coronavirus? Now, yes, there have been some cases who have been given HIV drugs. Uh, there was uh, a case in Thailand, we have a case in India. They, it was tried out in China also, and they have recovered, but there's not enough evidence on it. We cannot say this is the way to go. Your second question about weather conditions, again, I have the same answer. There's no evidence. These are all assumptions. We are an evidence-based organization. Unless we have evidence which conclusively says that yes, this will affect uh, coronavirus. We as WHO cannot say that. Thank you. With camera person Mithunjay Ayushman for Mirror Now.